Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue our SEO discussion and setting up our website for proper SEO. So, so far, I haven't talked about any plugin for SEO because that will come later. Right now, we want to focus on the architecture of your website. Make sure that your website is configured for SEO. So, this is more the big picture again, and then we'll get to the SEO plugin itself and you actually get into the tactics of optimizing your content for SEO. So in our last video, if you haven't looked at that video, check out the video on author box and creating your author pages or optimizing your author pages. In this video, we'll look at your blog post and how you categorize your content. So in SEO, you'll hear a lot about silos. Basically, you know, if, if the website is about WordPress, like in my case here, I would say WordPress SEO is one silo. WordPress performance can be another silo. WordPress e-commerce can be another silo. So I don't have to say WordPress each time, but you get the idea. It's like performance, SEO, e-commerce, you know, the, the nine pillars within Jazzy WP that, that are mentioned on the website, those can be silos and everything that I add in the blog can be categorized within those nine sections. Silo, you need to think of that before you start your uh, website design, you, you need to think about that from the architecture perspective. What topics you're going to be talking about, you should have a general idea before you actually go in and start creating content because you cannot start with, you know, like 15 silos to begin with when you only have three pieces of content on your website. So the general consensus is to start with two to three silo or general topic areas, but flesh out one at a time. So if we're going to talk about, let's say, SEO as a general topic, ideally, you would want to have at least 10 pieces of content on SEO. And that way, Google and the search engines will consider your website as an authority in that general topic. And then each piece of content supports that. So let's jump in into the website and let's go over to where this setup is. When we're looking at the content type posts, that's your article content. And what we want to do is go over to your categories. By default, you're going to have the uncategorized option and we can add new ones. So let's just say SEO is our new one. And let's add one more, we'll call it performance or speed. All right, so we have these two categories added. Now, if we go over to the posts, we can change the category from, from here with a quick edit, we can just say that speed. And you only want to have one category per article. You don't want to do multiple. So let's say that one is SEO. We'll update a couple more. So now we have a couple of SEO items and a couple of speed optimization items. Let's view this content on the front end. Right now, on the page itself, we don't have a way to figure out which category this was in. On the blog page, we don't have a way to go from j just filter on SEO items or speed optimization items, even though we have a tag. So now the next user experience improvement. So you have to remember like SEO and user experience, they kind of go both hand in hand because if a user has a better experience on your website, they're going to stay longer on your website and that is going to 
again, impact your overall search engine ranking because if a user stays longer on your page, Google will think, okay, well, I sent this user to this URL and the user seemed to have found the correct page because they stayed longer on that. So that, that's something that you need to be aware of how SEO works in general. Now, in our setup, how do we get that category option listed? So again, because we have the Elementor page builder, we can go over to the archive So we have a couple of ways to actually get categories on this page. One is since you shouldn't have probably more than five categories to begin with, you can just add them individually and you'll be all done. A second option is to create a menu item and add it to your blog page. So let's actually do the menu item because I think that will give you a little bit more better understanding of how the menus work as well. So I am going to go to menus and I want to create a new menu. And we'll call it blog categories. And here we already have categories that we can select from. We'll add it to the menu. Save that. Now let's go back to visit our website, go to the blog page, and we'll go into the template, the page builder for this. You can search for menu. So navigation menu. We'll put it up on top. Block categories is already selected. Horizontal, this actually works for us. We'll update that. View the page. Now we have SEO and speed optimization. I'm going to click on SEO, and that should take me to my category page. So again, this is important because now you have visited your silo page, your authority page for SEO. And there's a lot of things that we can do here to optimize it. For now, it's only gonna list all the articles that are categorized as SEO. And again, we can optimize the look and feel based on just the SEO, so we can have a unique design just for SEO and a unique design for speed optimization. So let's do that. Let's go to dashboard again. Let's go to our team builder. And if I go to my archive section, so the categories are again archives. Right now we have Post archive, we also have author archive, and now we can go create a new one. And let's select a different style here. Let's see, let's go with, with this style, three column layout. And all we need to do is click on display conditions, add, we want this for the categories, save. Let's view the page. When we're working on templates, you'll notice that up here it says Elementor Library. So this is not actual an actual page, but it's our template page. So if I go to my blog and click on SEO now, now it's going to load my actual template page for this category. So again, we're, we're not doing much customization here. We can have a brief description about what SEO is, the different aspects of SEO, and then all of these articles will start 
displaying below that. We can even customize the page even further by having specific articles as featured articles and then have the rest of the SEO articles show up below. So as you get more content for your category page, you should customize this page because this page becomes your authority page. And it's important that you're able to customize it. Again, using our Elementor Team Builder, the pro version, you're able to do this rather easily. Okay, so I want to recap now. We're focusing on the architecture of the website. We're, we're not focusing on the plugin part yet. We'll, we'll come to that in our next videos. From an architecture perspective, we took care of the blog post, the, the individual blog post page, the design for that. You have the blog archive page designed for that. We have the author page. We designed that. So three different pages up until now. And then the category is the fourth page. So we have, even though we're just talking about blog, we literally have four separate pages. And then if we want to customize the SEO page differently, if you want to customize the speed optimization page differently, you can have different design there. So even though we're just in general, we just say, hey, you know, let's set up a blog. If you dig in into that one blog, you can do a whole lot more in terms of SEO optimization. Ho hope that gives you a good general overview of SEO. And in our next video, we'll look at an actual plugin to do the SEO meta tags, titles, and descriptions. Okay. So until then, we'll talk to you later.